Hey gang, welcome back to another Viewers Project video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that there was several other videos prior to this one. And just for fun, I'm going to see if I can name them off. Andrew had a 65 coupe in Pennsylvania. And then Wally had a 68 convertible, which I did an update on, from Canada. And then it was Greg with his 79 Cortina in Australia. And then Jamel with his 68 Fastback in New York. And then it was Christian with his 67 Coupe in Romania. And next was Ricard with his 69 Mach 1 in Sweden. And then it was Ted with his 68 fastback project in Connecticut. I hope that was right. <laughs> well, I've got another one from New York. This is from Long Island, New York. And this is Gene with his 66 Mustang Coupe. And I think this one is a pretty neat one because he has an interesting story to tell. So let's take a look at Gene's project. Hey Barry, my name is Gene. I live in Long Island, New York and I'd like to share my project with you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for uh, the videos we put out and the knowledge you share with everybody. Uh, it's helped me tremendously and I know it's helped all of your viewers, so keep them coming. Um, I started this project, well, let me back up a little bit. I want to tell you a little bit about the car um, and its history with me. It's just as important as the restoration itself. Uh, as you can see, I'm no longer a teenager. But back in the uh, mid 80s, a very good friend of mine received this car as a graduation present uh, from his parents. We drove the car around for a couple of summers, had a lot of great uh, memories with this car and the people that were in it. And um, it's really, uh, it's been with me my whole adult life. Uh, the car was driven for a couple of summers back in the 80s. It developed some mechanical difficulties Nothing crazy, it turned out to be just a vacuum leak, but uh, it caused the car to be put in the garage. It sat there for, uh, I would say, about seven years or so. Uh, at that time, we had all gone, uh, or I, I didn't go, but uh, the in individual who owned the car went off to college and uh, started a career. I uh, had no time for the vehicle, and he wound up selling it to a family member. That uh, family member kept it in the same place it was stored for the previous years, never drove the car. I don't think he even saw the car. Uh, and I ran into him at my friend's wedding. We started to discuss the vehicle and the work that needed to be done. And uh, we talked. he talked about selling it to me. I wound up going back to the garage to see the vehicle. Uh, and naturally the car had aged a little bit, even sitting in the garage. Uh, what, a, you know, what I thought was a solid vehicle uh, definitely uh, had aged enough to see that it was full of plastic, uh, a lot of Bondo. Uh, mechanically, it was in the same shape, obviously, it wasn't when it was put in there. But when I got in the car, I was 17 again, and I, uh, I, I couldn't let it go. So we, uh, we made a deal, uh, worked out a price. I wound up getting the, the vehicle out of that garage onto a flatbed and drove it about 100 miles upstate to my mother's house. Uh, from there, the car was offloaded and stored in the garage until, let's see, this all started about 1997. So about uh, mid-2000, uh, I took some cash and, and I got the car mechanically sound. I got the engine fired up again, uh, ran great, uh, went over the brakes, put a water pump in, hoses, uh, anything that I thought uh, you know, would cause me uh, mechanical failure. Uh, and I wound up driving the car back down uh, to Long Island and um, my intentions at the time were to just do some minor upgrades. I was able to, to really start uh, purchasing a lot of parts that I knew I needed, uh, stockpiled them uh, with the intention of doing little projects, but being able to drive the car. Um, and back then, as you know, there was no YouTube, uh, there was no uh, sources to really get information. This was... Uh, Pretty much what I relied on early on, 
publications like this. Often they had some uh, how-tos in them and, and projects that they were working on. And of course, uh, as much word of mouth as I could get. By the way, here's a, here's a shot of the car when, when I purchased it. Looks pretty good from there. But as we all know, that's not the truth. Uh, anyway, like I said, my intention was to do little projects. Um, at one point I had purchased uh, Tri-Y headers for the car and I thought that would be a great little upgrade to the car and make it sound great. Uh, so I proceeded to try and get the exhaust manifolds off the engine um, and uh, turned out I had some broken bolts in front of the shock towers that I couldn't get out. I went up stripping the top of the engine off to take care of that and while I had those off I decided to detail the engine compartment a little bit. Uh, banging around in there and, and uh, moving things, uh, I heard something hit the ground on the other side of me uh, and I turned around and it was a pile of rust that used to be the uh, frame rail under the driver's shock tower. So that was a game changer for me. Um, you know, I decided then that it was time to put the car up on a dolly and uh, rip it down and see what I was dealing with. Like uh, most of your other viewers, obviously what I saw was the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the project really uh, is a tremendous undertaking for me, especially at that time. Uh, my wife and I uh, just had our first child, uh, so, you know, uh, money wasn't really available for this project. I, luckily, I had enough stockpile where I could get started with it, and uh, it actually lasted me quite a few years. But there's a time issue, uh, you know, in my job, I had taken a promotion that ate up a lot of my time. I'm sure you all know the story. But uh, anyway, you know, I started with one project on the car. Uh, I stripped it down, you'll see the car in a moment, uh, to its bare shell, uh, and uh, just kept working at it. And I've got a long way to go, but um, I've made a lot of progress. I second guess myself a lot. I have a tendency to look at something a, a thousand times before I make a move. And, uh, you know, even when I'm done, uh, some of the things that I started doing on the car originally, I'd love to go back and do again. But we we'll go round and round like that. I'm 52, and uh, I'd like to be able to drive the car someday. So just going to keep on moving. I'm sure uh, based on the condition of the car when I started and the fact that it was still on the road uh, tells me that whatever I've done to it has got to be a 1,000% better. So uh, it couldn't be any worse than that. So that's the story behind the car. Um, I'll take a walk around the car and show you what I've done to it. I've uh, got a lot more to do, but I'm uh, finally sort of uh, turning a corner. I think I've got all of the major fabrication work done. Uh, I'm just finishing up with the front frame rail installation on one side and uh, patch on the other. And that should put an end to all the big stuff. So uh, again, a lot of stuff to take care of after that. But I feel like I'm making some progress. I'm hoping to get the car back on the ground this year for the first time. And geez, it's got to be about 12 years. So that's a good feeling. Anyway, I'll grab the camera and I'll show you what I've got going on. So this is my project. It is a 1966 Coupe C Code 289 three speed manual. The car was complete, which is a, a big plus. Um, here's some of the, the work I've been doing lately. The car is up on a dolly on uh, four jack stands, Harbor Freight jack stands, uh, so I could roll it around easily. It's worked out well. A little tough getting underneath the car to do some work, but uh, I make do. Um, so I'll take you where I started. Uh, the first repair that I made was this full length floor pan, front to back. Uh, you know, looking back now, I wish I had changed the entire floor pan, but uh, they're solid. Uh, toe board was done, kickboard, uh, seat rises, that was the, the first uh, repair that I made, uh, torque boxes, usual, usual stuff, came out pretty good. Um, from there, I moved on to the, uh, let me see if I can get a shot for you, the rear frame rails uh, from about here, back, uh, both sides were rotted out. So I had to wind up uh, replacing those. The uh, inner wheelhouses on both sides were patched, uh, front corners, and a piece of the rear. 
the outer uh, on this side is the original one. Uh, usual stuff. Uh, rear brace replaced. Tar car took a little hit in the in the rear, in between both frame rails. Uh, new tail light panel. It's kind of hard to to get in here. I'm a little limited on space. Even this garage wasn't here when I started, so made uh, made things a little difficult. Passenger side, uh, excuse me, driver side uh, rear quarter complete. Again, if I had found you. Uh, before this work was completed, I would have saved myself a lot of time and energy. I would have never cut up into the uh, sail panels. Would have done what your uh, fix is. Uh, quarter panels a little. Uh, I had a little problem with it. I still do. Um, it's about a quarter of an inch too long. One of the measurements that I did not take was the one from the filler panel behind the rear window. To the end of the quarter panel and match it up to the factory one. Uh, I learned that after uh, I started watching your videos. Mistake made on my part. Uh, I tried a few things to try and correct it. Didn't work out. I was getting frustrated. Uh, I wound up stopping work on the car. Uh, and then I decided to just leave it as is for now and move on to something else and come back to it later with a fresh head. And uh, you know, eventually I'll get it done. I'll probably have to wind up cutting. Uh, about a quarter of an inch out of the quarter panel. I'll move it back in the in the rear section and uh, that should take care of it. Rear wheelhouse, uh, outer was replaced, inner was patched. Uh, fitment's pretty good. Uh, for some reason, the whole driver's side of the car was in much worse shape than the passenger side. I don't know if it was parked up against the wall or what caused it, but pre pretty much everything on the driver's side of the car was completely destroyed. Uh, the, the door had been uh, patched. Uh, the, 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 my friend bought this car from a body shop. And in the 80s, we know what the, uh, the big fix, fix was there, was to load everything up with, with uh, filler. So uh, the door had to be replaced. Uh, everything looks pretty close as far as the body lines go. Uh, I did wind up buying a new uh, aftermarket fender. And I can see I'm going to have some issues up front. But um, I'll tackle those when the time comes. Again, a new, uh, new floor on the driver's side as well. New driver's seat riser. Uh, tow board was patched. Uh, like I said, I, I just got done hanging that uh, front frame rail, so I still have a little bit of work to do there. Uh, dashboard's going to need a patch. Radio was cut out for a Benzie box back in the 80s. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tackle that. Just to give you an idea on... Uh, what kind of uh, filler was in this car. This is the passenger side fender, which is actually in really good shape. Uh, they did put a patch in down here, uh, but they wound up brazing uh, a piece of sheet metal over the rotted and rusted out section instead of cutting it out and patching it. So naturally the, uh, the depth of that, or the thickness of it, caused them to load the entire fender up with plastic. Uh, I did grind off a little spot here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick uh, and it runs down the whole fender. You can see even up in here. Uh, from the back side of the fender, it doesn't appear that there's any damage to it. It just had to be built up in order to accommodate all of these crazy patches they put in. They did the same thing on the rear quarters. I found about a half an inch of uh, plastic on the rear quarters uh, and that traveled up into the doors and uh, you know continue down the side of the car to try and even everything out up in the front usual stuff i had to split the uh the cowl open was able to salvage the top i patched up the corners uh the lower i wound up putting in uh sections uh repair sections around the hats on both sides brought everything down to bare metal epoxy primed back together uh 135 welds i believe and then epoxy primed everything after I brought it down to bare metal. Side panels, the same thing. Uh, both replaced left and right, as well as the uh, uh, rocker extensions. The, the quality of these patch panels, as we all know, is terrible. Uh, I could not get the fitment in here close enough to where I felt comfortable cutting the whole thing off. All of my damage was down in this lower section, so I wound up uh, cutting it. Uh, Probably about here, 
all the way down and I pieced in the uh, replacement ground everything down uh, and it looks pretty good I think it's solid the uh, passenger side of the car also got the uh, side panel replaced again the passenger side of the car is in much better condition than the driver's side is uh, firewall had to do a little bit of patching uh, especially in this area over here uh, actually down lower behind the torque box driver's side torque box is in and unfortunately um, at the time I did not know that you had to separate the two panels uh, of the torque box to actually mount it onto the flange of the frame rail so unfortunately on the pass on the passenger side of the car it is not done I've gone back and forth about actually removing it and and redoing it um, still up in the air on that I don't know which direction I'm going to go in but it's in it does add strength uh, where there was none before so I'll see what I'm going to do with that later down to the last piece of the car that I've been working on the biggest uh, project that I've done I think well one of the biggest projects uh, as I told you before when I was cleaning out the engine bay uh, when I had the engine stripped down the uh, frame rail on the passenger excuse me driver's side uh, kind of fell to the floor and uh, that's a part of the damage so I decided to scrap this uh, frame rail I went up going with a Dynacorn complete rail on the driver's side and that's what you see in there uh, passenger side frame rail was in pretty good shape I wound up uh, having to replace the forward section here again the patch panel was a quarter of an inch too high and a quarter of an inch too wide so I wound up uh, slicing the old uh, frame rail in this section and then uh, piecing in the replacement section and I had to do the same thing down here uh, I sliced it and took about a quarter of an inch out and welded it back together uh, so she's solid again the shock tower was in pretty good shape uh, I had to do a patch up in here and I have to do the same thing on the other side you see there's a little hole in the bottom of it in the sheet metal but uh, it's it's really solid the frame rail is solid underneath it so I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that and as you can see uh, I did a one piece apron uh, also from Dynacorn it fit pretty well the biggest problem I had up front here is with this one piece rail uh, somehow in the factory uh, when I laid the frame rail in the pocket at 90 degrees this way when I would put that at 90 this shock tower was kicked into the engine compartment about a quarter of an inch I don't know if it wasn't jigged right or, or what the issue was but I went back and forth uh, I called uh, the individual that I bought the parts from he spoke to Dynacorn and naturally the, uh, their response was that everything needs a little tweaking uh, with uh, a little help from the uh, from the dealer and uh, researching a little bit I decided to weld in the frame rail at uh, 90 degrees so it's standing up 90 degrees in the pocket uh, I welded in the driver's side torque box uh, which was also an issue as you can see when the torque box was made the kick in over here that's supposed to follow the contour on the firewall was not uh, you know they, they didn't put it in there I actually had a when I split the, the torque box I had to modify the inner piece to match the contour of the firewall to be able to get it to lay up in position in this section uh, I actually had to cut about a quarter of an inch on this uh, kickback and then weld that back together to make everything fit solid uh, the only thing that I struggled with was whether or not to try and kick uh, slice the the outer and the inner and try and pie cut it and kick it back to the firewall eventually I decided not to do it I am attached to the firewall here I'm attached to the frame rail on both sides uh, I think missing a couple of spot welds up on the top there isn't going to make a big difference uh, so I decided to just leave it straight across and I'll find a way to fill that gap in there so I don't uh, allow moisture to roll down inside but I welded that all in to shore up this frame rail and then I got some angle iron and built this little jig or uh, fixture so I could get a bottle jack off the bottom edge of this shock tower 
and push the top of that shock tower over so I could get my export brace in and my Monte Carlo bar and get this up at 90 degrees. Everything was taken off of center line of the car. I found the center line. Uh, tape is falling down there now, but I found the center line of the vehicle. I took my measurements off of both sides. This passenger side frame rail is exactly where it belongs. It's true down the center of the vehicle. Before I began any work, you can see over here I put a, I welded in a brace so I knew that this frame rail wouldn't move and it's a good thing I did because just like the rear of the car, the front did take a small hit in between the frame rails and when I cut the uh, radiator support out, uh, there was some movement. Uh, fortunately, the frame rail didn't move, but all of the tin did, so it was under some pressure. So, um, you know, that's pretty much where I stand. All my measurements are good off the front of the car. As you can tell, I don't have a jig for the vehicle, but I was able to uh, use a laser line off some targets uh, underneath the car. They're hanging. I don't know if you can see. There's one hanging somewhere over here, right about here. Another one over here. And uh, I just got a, a good solid laser level underneath the car and matched the measurements from left to right. Uh, and I think everything worked out pretty good. So that's where I'm at. I have a little bit more welding to do uh, inside the car. Um, I have to put the uh, sway bar bracket in. Uh, that has to be modified as well. There's nothing that I purchased for this car that has been, you know, perfect right out of the box. Everything needs modification. So I'll do that next. Uh, and then the radiator support will go in. I have a new Dynacorn piece for that. That's actually pretty nice. I uh, ran into the same issues you did with the, uh, the, the dimensions on the frame rails. Uh, I was able to get the passenger side frame rail in, but the driver side frame rail uh, was just too wide. So I wound up slicing the bottom of the uh, radiator support and peeling that open. So I'm sitting on top of the rails. So my dimensions from the top of the rail to the top of the apron are correct. And uh, I'll, when I weld that back in, I'll just uh, run a bead on that and close it back up again. And it should be good to go. From there, uh, the plan is to get the car on the ground. I've uh, seen a couple of videos for building a, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's a, a jig that goes on the front of the back of the vehicle using three-quarter plywood and some uh, two-by-sixes that will allow me to roll the car onto its side. I'd like to do that so I can get underneath there and uh, finish off the uh, underside of the car. It is an epoxy primer. Uh, it's all been taken down to bare metal. So it's ready to go. But it is a pain to lay on your back and try and shoot uh, paint and primer. So if I can get the car on its side, that'll help a lot. And um, after that, like I said, I'd like to get the car on the ground, get the suspension back in it. And uh, keep moving forward, you know. It's definitely a much bigger project than I ever expected it to be. The, uh, by the way, the last piece of the car that I never or haven't, didn't look into was the roof. And I assumed that I'd be okay there. But I did take a grinder and try and uh, see what I had there. And they wound up being test holes instead of, uh, instead of grinding off a little surface area. I don't know if you can see, but it's about an eighth of an inch of filler up here already again from the inside I don't see a lot of damage I do see or I can feel a couple of uh, deformities in the roof in this area so I think just like everything else you know they just put so much plastic on back then that uh, you know they kind of had to just uh, you know run it across the entire car to just level it off so I'm hoping I don't find anything up up there that uh, I don't know about all the mysteries of the car have been have been unlocked at this point except for the roof uh, the only thing on the roof that was damaged was the driver's drip rail I forgot to show you earlier uh, it was all rotted out in this area uh, Barry I think you had done a video on it that's what prompted me to get up the nerve to do it myself I wound up cutting uh, cutting the section out completely taking it off the car I bought a flanging tool from uh, Harbor Freight and kind of recreated this whole piece here, welded it back to the 
the outer section and then uh, welded it back in the car. Came out pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I don't know where I got that phrase from. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the story of the car. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't, uh, don't get intimidated. Don't give up. Uh, when you need to take a break, walk away from the car. That's my uh, biggest advice. I've done a little too much walking, unfortunately. I'll be 100 years old by the time the car is finished. But um, looking forward to driving this one day. Like I said before, you know, when I get in this car, I'm 17 again. The Scorpions are blasting in the 6x9s on the package shelf. Uh, love to get there again with the car. So good luck with your project, Barry. Once again, thank you so much for uh all your help uh i know i've uh contacted you emailed you you're always a a, a pleasure to, to deal with uh very giving with the information and it's helped me tremendously so keep it up expect more take care now <laughs> i thought i'd have some fun there gene we are the same age and so when you say you've known this car since you were 17 that takes me back to 1984. And I think it's pretty cool that you have been around this car in some sense all those years. Now you said that a friend had received it as a gift for his graduation and you know you had some fun with it, driving it around and interacting with it. And then of course life goes on. You know, his friend went to college, the car had problems, it sat, you know, got neglected, ignored, whatever. And by chance he managed to get it back and I think that's pretty cool. Now Gene has done a bunch of work to this car and I'm pretty happy about that. You know it shows his dedication to getting this car back together and back on the road. He's worked on the rear frame rails, whole back end of the car, floor pans, torque boxes, front frame rails. He's got the uh, front uh, core support to put in. And he solved a problem he had with the frame rail, the one-piece frame rail with the um, shock tower that he got. And, you know, things just didn't line up. And he highlights that. You know, as we all know, these things never fit right. We always have to modify or improve or whatever to make the things, make the panels fit the car. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the facts. So I'm really happy for Gene. And I know he's, like he said, he feels like he's 17 again when he gets around it and, and wants to drive it. And I know he's looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to updates as well. So really happy for you, Gene. And keep on chugging. Get it done. So I want to point out to the rest of you, if you are interested in taking part in this process, if you want to have your car featured on viewers projects, by all means, let me know. I know I have a couple other people already working on videos and I'm looking forward to their, you know, posts and, and we'll work it out. We'll figure out what we need to do to edit it and all that sort of thing. So don't get too caught up in the idea that this isn't, I'm not very good at this or I don't know what I'm doing. If you can put together a video similar to the jeans, I can tune it up, you know, if I need to and edit it to make it look good. So just keep that in mind. But if you're interested, send me an email, joedaddiesgarage at gmail.com. We'll go back and forth and talk it over and see what we can do. And once it's in place, I'll put the video together and the viewers on here get to see it. So that's going to be it for now. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. By all means, leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment what you think about this video and videos like this. And that's going to be it. So until next time, take care of yourselves.